All right, Luke chapter 8 and verse 9. Read it for time's sake. Verse 9, it reads, And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the, the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they, which, when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. Verse 15. But that on the good ground are they, which in honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring, fruit, bring forth fruit with patience. So as you notice in this passage, here is the disciples and the Lord. And it's right, right after when the Lord uh, had this amazing speech. You know, a bunch of people came from different cities to go hear him. And the disciples basically asked him, uh, Hey, Lord, that was, some, that was some pretty heavy stuff you just laid on the people. What does it even mean? And what I find very interesting is that he doesn't answer that specific question first. He says the why of the parable. Okay? And this is the why of the parable, is that the disciples are trustworthy. The disciples are trustworthy. Look at verse 10. It says, And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries and the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they might not understand. They will know what this parable will mean, because they are deemed trustworthy, while others are not. And the reason why I come to that conclusion is because verse 10 through 15 describe characteristics of a group of people that the Lord illustrates in the parable. Now I'm going to spiritualize this passage. And I want you to, what I want to talk to you tonight is the list of the characteristics of these group of people that the Lord talks about. And see where you stand with the Lord and whether or not you are indeed trustworthy to Him. The title of my message is, Are You Trustworthy? That's good, brother. Okay? Come on. First point is, are you even saved? Okay, my first point is, are you even saved? Now, verse 11 through 12, this reads, Now, the parable is this, The seed is the word of God. Verse 12, Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. <coughs> verse 11 clearly states, The parable is talking about the seed, which is the word of God. And the Lord Jesus says in verse 12 about certain people that will hear the word and will be in their heart, but the devil comes in and takes it out of them, lest they should be saved, as the Bible says. Now this begs the question, are you saved? Right now are you saved? Go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John, chapter 5. Look at verse 10. 1 John, chapter 5, and verse 10. It reads, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believed not the record that God gave of his Son. Verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. The scripture plainly states, clear as day, if you do not have the Son of God in you, then you are not of God. Simple as that. It kind of makes sense. How are you supposed to be trustworthy to handle the things of God when the only way to be is to have the Son in you. That's the only way. If someone isn't saved in this room right now and you want to be trustworthy in the sight of God, then you've got to get saved. 
That's the first step. That's the first process of even going towards that. Go to 1 John 4. 1 John 4, verse 3. 1 John 4 and verse 3. The Bible reads, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whatever you have heard that it should, not, that it should come, even now already is in the world. Verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby now we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Very simple. Yeah. Very, very simple. If you don't have the spirit of God or the spirit of Christ, you got the spirit of any Christ. Yeah. Very, very simple. Straightforward. Even if you don't like it, guess what? The Bible says it. So yeah. you're wrong and this is right. Amen, Thus proves the point. How can one be trustworthy to God? when the person in you hates him and it's not the one that loves him. There can't be any trust. You might say, oh, well, I'm saved. I, I know whom I trusted. Well, if that's the case. Let me ask you a question. Have you been working up a sweat for the Lord? Have you been working for him? Which leads to my second point. Don't worry, it's not Calvinism. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, not preaching that. It leads, it leads to my second point is, are you even working? Are you even working? Go back to Luke 8. I was looking at Rob over here, staring out the face when I said that. <laughs> All right, Luke 8. Go back to Luke 8, our main text. Look at verse 13. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Now these are people that believed and were joyful when they got saved. Okay? But there was no progression in their walk. There was nothing. It just stopped at Calvary. And that was it. They became unprofitable to God, as the Bible says. This is not how a saved person should go about explaining to God that they should trust them. Instead, they need action. Go to Colossians 1 and put your hand at Philippians 1. Go to Colossians 1 and put your hand on Philippians 1. For time's sake, I'm going to read the verses. It's verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it in Colossians 1, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and longsuffering with joyfulness. Now go to Philippians 1. And look at verse 9. I'm going to read it real quick. In this I pray that your love may, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere, and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ, under the glory and praise of God. Paul's basically commanding these two churches, okay, he's commanding these two churches to be fruitful and have good work, as it says in Colossians, and to be sincere and without offense till Christ comes, as it says in Philippians. These churches are very, trust, are very trustworthy because of the members in the church that Paul recognizes that have taken the next step, okay, of being a saved individual to actively serving the Lord. Hence why it is so important to not stop at Calvary if you wish to be used by God. Otherwise, you become like the Corinth church where Paul ended up doubting whether or not it was good to plant the church there because there was so much filth and sin going on in the church. Now, can you truly say that you've been working for the Lord? Can you honestly say that? Whether you're passing out a track, praying for people, reading the scriptures, uh, whatever have you. If not, then you know why the pastor hasn't called you to do certain things. 
Maybe that's why you're getting annoyed with him, saying, oh, why hasn't he called me yet? Well, you haven't done anything yet. That's why. You know, it could be, you, you could be helping out, you know, setting up chairs or simply cleaning the bathroom, but you won't do it. And yet you ask to do something which you have no right to even ask. You don't have the right report of being trustworthy. So why should he even trust you? Or why should he even give you anything to do, anything in the ministry? It's his ministry. Just to give you a quick testimony, um, I left this church in 2018. Uh, I got worldly again. You know, unfortunately, I mean, I hate to admit it, but it happened. I got full of the devil, and I ended up living wicked again. Obviously, I came back, and praise God, that happened, and he got me back here. Amen. And I'll spare the details on how that came to be, but, you know, this is the thing about pastor, and this is why he's not a fool, is because he didn't give me something as soon as I got into the church. He didn't give me a, a sermon to do. He didn't give me things to do in the church. I had to prove that I'm not going to leave this church again, and I'm not going to. I've learned what happens when you go back out. You don't realize how filthy you were before you got into church, before you got into Christ. And I'm telling you right now, don't do it. Don't, don't even try to go that way, man. It's not worth it. Once you see the light, you, it's hard to go back. It's really hard to go back. Which leads me to my third point, is are you good ground? Are you good ground? Verse 15, Luke 8. We'll go back to our main text. Luke 8. Look at verse 15. But that on the good ground are they, which an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. These are the people that are trusted in God's eyes. But in the ministry, but also in the ministry that the man of God has been stationed in. These aren't people that look for glory. They're not trying to make a name for themselves. They're not trying to be the next whatever they want to be in their own mind. Um, they don't want that. They don't, they're not trying to go around to the Christians and critique them and saying, oh, are you doing this and this? Or are you really saved? Or are you really trusting in Christ? Do you really believe in the Lord as much as I do? They're not doing that. Instead, as the verse says, they wait patiently to bear fruit. They wait very, very patiently. And sometimes that you maybe have to be the person that has to wait a long, 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 long time in order to do anything in the ministry. And that may be the, the test that God gives you because, you know, I, it's, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just simply what the Bible is, has given, uh, given me. But, you know, if it's for you where God wants you to just sit in the chair and shut up and listen, hear the sermon, hear the studies, you know, listen to the pastor and not say a word, then you've got to do it. If you want to be in the ministry, trust me, I had to do, oh man, I had to, I wanted to show that I was not going to leave, man. Like, I did a lot of stuff and I wanted to do it, not because I had to. I could just sit on the chair and not do anything. But I wanted to show that I wanted to help in the ministry and I proved it and I'm, here I am. Here I am. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. And the reason why he doesn't ask you to do something is because you don't have to answer for anything stupid that you do inside the church or outside of the church. He does. Okay? If you make a decision and you tell people that you're a Christian and you go to this church, they're not going to look at you. They're going to forget about who you are. They're going to look at the man of God and say, oh, that's what he teaches. Of course. Okay, well, if that's what he teaches and I'm not going there. I don't want to hear what he has to say. And then another lost soul is, is lost. We'll never get saved. So I end, I end up with this. Are you trustworthy or, or untrustworthy? That's basically what the sermon is. Go through these points and you'll see for yourself. That's it. All right, so let's go to Judges 14. Judges 14. Okay, uh, uh, Brother, I want to ask you a question. How do you live? Do you live like someone's trying to kill you? I mean, how many of us in this room have honestly been in situations where we knew someone was really actively trying to kill us? Not very many of us, if any, right? Maybe just a few of us, right? 
Do you live your Christian life like there's someone after you and someone after the loved ones you have? Do you? The Bible says, Be sober and vigilant, for your adversary the devil walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That's you. That's your wife, brother. That's, that's Sister Mean Jong over here, our pastor's wife. Right? That's this new couple here. That's Brother Max coming back from the world. Right? That's, that's our newest member. That's the, the person standing behind the pulpit. It's everybody. Right? He's coming after all of us, brethren. This is a, this is a group effort. Back to back. In the trenches. Do you live that way, though? Right? Or do you just live that way Sunday and, and part of Wednesday? Right? Because I'm sure that's what you do. Right? We got saved at Calvary's cross and we overcame the devil, the lion. Right? But after that, we got that physical victory. Did you still stay vigilant? Did you, still, did you stay as vigilant that day when you're thinking about your sin, when you're thinking about all the wicked things you've done and you got salvation that day? No, I bet you you got laxed. And if it wasn't then, it was once you started getting good doctrine, once you started getting blessed by God, once the blessing started coming, oh man, let's get a little more laxed. It's good. The lion's dead. The lion's dead. I don't need to worry about that. I don't need to worry about that at all. But you do. Have you considered how you could help one of your brethren stay out of the lion's path, out of the path of sin? Have you prayed for him? Hmm? Today I want to preach to you about Samson. Samson, he had the Holy Spirit fall upon him. He, he, felt, he felt the experience. That old charismatic, mm -mm, felt it. He felt it. He felt the power of God. And, and it enacted on him. And he was able to do something mighty in the Spirit of God. And then right away, next verse, I'm going to go get the honeys. I'm going to go after the wife, the woman my parents don't want for me. The woman God doesn't want for me. That's what I'm going after. That's what he does. Go to Judges 14. Today we're going we're gonna to learn about how not to fight a lion. How not to fight a lion. Okay. Judges 14. I don't even got my Bible. Can you hand me that? I'm a goofy. All right, man. Judges 14. I ain't even there yet. My first point today uh, is going to be you don't fight a lion by thinking it's safe. Mm. By being disobedient because you were told to be sober and vigilant. Right? You don't fight a lion by, by thinking it's safe, by thinking it's all right. Numbers 23, 24 says that the great and young lions will not stop until they eat the prey, until they have drank the blood of the slain. That's you that these lions are coming after, that that main lion's coming after. Right? That lion. Of course, we have the lion of the tribe of Judah on our side, but there's another roaring lion, a young lion walking about, and he's nimble, and he's coming, and he's looking. He's checking every one of your little spots, all your little spots armor, and he's looking for the spot. Get a good bite on there. Judges 14, we're going to start here at verse 1. Verse 1, the Bible says, And Samson went down to Timnoth and saw a woman in Timnoth of the daughters of the Philistines. Go down to verse 4. But his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord, that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. For at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Then, Sam, then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a a young lion roared against him and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would have rent a kid that's a goat and he had nothing in his hand but he told not his father or his mother what he had done didn't even tell him about the Holy Ghost coming upon him verse 7 and he went down and talked with the woman and she pleased Samson well and after that he he returned to take her and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion and behold there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion and he took thereof in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother and he gave them and they did eat but he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion the devil still desires you christian he still desires to take you and you know what uh don't let don't let you don't let yourself get puffed up about salvation, about having a good church, about having brethren who are praying for you. Just because you submit that little prayer request to the group chat doesn't mean that you don't got to pray for it. You know what? If you got 20 brethren out there praying five, 10 minutes for you, you better be spending that five times 20, whatever that is. I'm not that good at math. You better be spending that much time of your own self in prayer. Yeah, if you ask someone to pray for you, and I'm not trying to say don't, don't. You keep asking them to pray for you, but do it on your side as well. 
Do it on yourself. Don't, don't, let, don't let yourself get, uh, 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 you know, all puffed up about it, right? That, you know what, I could walk this path of sin. I felt the mightiness of God. I asked a Jew one time and I said, hey, man, why do you listen to that rock music, man? Don't you, you know that stuff's bad. He said, oh, I will walk through the valley and I will not fear no evil. And oh, man, dude, come on, man. Get that out of here, man. Get that out of here. Michael wouldn't even bring a railing accusation against the, uh, against the devil. And you're out there trying to call him out by name. Come on, lion. Come on. I heard David did it something to you and Samson did something to you. I'm the third one. Nah, man, you're not going to get no victory, man. You're not going to get no victory. And you know what? The, the devil's smooth. He's, he, once you get that, phys, that first physical victory and you take out that physical lion, now you got an invisible lion. You thought the devil was bad before you got saved? Now that you're saved, he's a much more deadly creature and he's going to allure you with something sweet. He's going to allure you with the honey. Honey is a type of scripture in, in the Holy Scriptures. It's a type of the Bible. What's the devil doing with some Bible in his mouth? Huh. Well, you know what, brethren? The devil will get you in that book. He'll let you not read your Bible all 30 days of the month. So so the first day of what would you get? November 1, you, you know, I'm going to read my proverb today. And you know what? And you get all in there and he might just slip you a little bit of Calvinism. He might slip you a little bit of something. You know what? You know what happened with so I went to, with the street preacher or anything in a while. I think that sinner's prayer is wrong. You know, I think I think it's wrong. You know, that's what he'll slip you. That's what he'll slip you. If you're not familiar with the honey, you're not going to know what type of honey you're bringing into your body. When you haven't been in this book, you're going to get a little honey and say, oh, that's good. I'm, that's good. I'm going to run with that one. You know what, brethren? Be careful. Be careful because he, he's going to let you be, be all philosophizing and, and realizing everything. Beware lest philosophy and vain deceit, right? Beware of it. Beware lest any man he should, should, should beguile you with enticing words, with enticing words, words that, draw, that stir you up, right? We're preachers. We're, we're trying to entice you to do something, but we're trying to get you to entice, entice you to get in that book yeah, right we're trying to entice you to get in prayer brethren and samson was not not supposed to t touch a dead body anyways why is he getting honey out of a dead body you know why brethren because i think he was like you you don't hear about that nazarite vow until numbers 6 6 and and, and the angel that spoke to his parents and told them about what was going to be going on he mentioned the nazarite vow in passing but then he talked about oh well you know he can't drink a strong drink and you know don't eat anything from the vine and and don't eat uh, anything unclean but he mentioned that nazarite vow in passing you know what brethren don't stop learning past salvation salvation was a free gift and i'm glad you learned of it and i'm glad you understand salvation's free and you don't have to do anything but don't stop there don't stop there. You're standing next to that carcass, that carcass of the lion the Lord just gave you victory over. Keep moving. There's more in the Bible than just salvation. There's a whole lot more for you to learn there, brethren. There's a whole lot of stuff for you to take in. You have to go to number six. I wonder if Samson went to no number six when his mommy and daddy said, hey, you've, you, 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 you're, a go you're a godly child. You got the Nazarite vow on you. I wonder if you went there. I wonder if you went there. I wonder if when pastor teaches you these doctrines, if you go home and make them your own. Or is that just what the preacher taught me? That's just what the preacher told me. Or is it your, is it your, your, your doctrine with God between you and Jesus Christ? You got the Old Testament and you got the New Testament in here. I thought everything comes in, in threes. I thought everything comes in threes. It's because Jesus Christ is the word. He's that third part and he's in you. He's in you. Brethren, he's in you. You got to make these doctrines your own. Keep learning the Bible. It's not safe to just stay there. Right? It's not safe to play around with this stuff. You're not safe in this world. You're safe in the fortress of God's words. My second point is, you don't fight a lion by drinking and playing around, by playing games, by telling jokes. It's not how you kill a lion, brethren. Uh, you know, and, and, and you may be deceived by the, by the devil's honey right now, you know. You may be all up in that honey and thinking it's all good. And you know what? I'm doing all right. And, uh, and, and praise the Lord. That was a great sermon, brother. That was a great sermon. We do need to enjoy the fruits that we have already. Amen. Amen. You got to enjoy some of those fruits or they might mess around and fall down and rot. Praise the Lord, brother. That's real good. That's real good. And you know what? You know how you know those are good fruits? Because you be in the Bible. 
you be in the Bible. That's what I was just talking about. When you've been in the honey and you get some of that fake came over from China honey, it's mostly syrup. You know, right, sister? You know. You know it's not real honey. You know this is some imported garbage, some watered down, right, brother? You know when you've had the real stuff, right? But when you haven't, oh, it's just honey. It's just, it's so good, right? And, and, and brethren, let's see what will happen here. Because you know what? If you start being, if, if you already sin in the things you're ignorant of, if you stay in that bad honey, that bad honey is going to get you to start sinning in things that you know you're not supposed to be doing. That's what it's going to do to you. Judges 14, verse 10. Judges 14, verse 10. The Bible says, So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast, for so used the young men to do. And it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. You know what, brethren? Notice the Bible points out there that he had a, a, young, a feast like the young men used to do. Huh. Do you remember, do you remember Job uh, uh, sacrificing for his children because... He, his children were having little feasts, and he, he thought they had been sinning over there. I wonder what they're doing there. A little feast, a little soiree, a little kickback, right? Huh? A little call the honeys over. Come on, partner. It's going to be cool. Come slide through. That's what it is. Let me, let me put it in modern, modern vernacular for you. He had, a, he had a little potty, and he had the, the people from the bad side of town come over. It must have been quite the party because 30 of the ops showed up. 30 of the opposition showed up. They did. That's what it said. They came through and they was his companions. 30 of the people that's over his whole family, over his country, over everybody he loves. 30 of them mugs showed up. Oh, come here, buddy. Come on. Come on, buddy, old pal. Man, he chose the wrong friends of the bridegroom. The wrong ones. The wrong ones, brethren. And that's what you're going to do if you keep staying in that, that honey. That's what you're going to do, brethren. You keep hanging around the world, and next thing you know is you're going to be surrounded behind enemy lines, right? Surrounded. Then you know what's going to happen? You're going to start being just like them. You're going to blend in. You ever seen that study where, they, where they, everybody knows what's going on except for the one guy, and they're all like, what color is that? Everybody's like, blue. And the one idiot, he's like, yeah, it's blue. Oh, man, you know, that's the bluest blue I've ever seen, you know? He probably goes farther than, man, oh, I need a blue shirt. My shirt's blue. Oh, man, you know? Man, it goes further than everybody. And likewise, brethren, when you go into sin, you're going to be the biggest sinner. Anybody who's gone back to the world will know you're going to go deeper in sin than where you were before you got saved. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. That simple. It's that simple, brethren. What happens next? Samson starts getting real comfortable with ops. He starts getting real comfortable with the Philistines. He starts telling them stories. Starts giving them riddles. Come on, man. They must have been your buddy. Start giving them riddles and stuff. Man, don't know what he get a riddle to this random cat, you know? Like, no, he really started chopping it up with them, right? And, and, and what happened? Well, he, he ended up making a little bet with them, right? He said, oh, man, if you guys can answer this riddle in the next seven days, then I'm going to give you 30 pieces of clothes. And you know what? If my new 30 buddies, if my new 30 friends, if you guys get the riddle right, then it's going to be cool. Just give me 30 pieces of clothes. And what you got to learn from there is the devil don't play fair. There was 30 of them, and, and, and if they gave one piece of clothing, one pair of clothing, because I believe it was a, a garment and something else, if they gave 30 pairs of clothes, then, uh, then, then it was one from each of them. But for Samson, on that bet, he had to give 30 pieces. The devil don't play fair, brethren. He wants to leave you butt naked and ashamed and humiliated at the judgment seat of Christ. And that's what you're going to do. That's the path you're on right now. Don't play me. I know every one of us is not where we should be. Amen. They say if you could look back and see a time when you were sweeter with Jesus Christ than you are now, you're backslidden. Yeah. Wow, it's that easy. Good. It's that easy, brethren. It's that easy. The devil wants to take your testimony away and he wants you to be just that guy at church. Can't be trusted. That's what he wants to do to you. He wants to strain your relationships. Notice in that passage there, you, we won't read it for time's sake, but when, when Samson made this little riddle, it didn't just upset his friends, but it even, got his, it even got his wife worried. It says in verse 16, I believe, that the friends went and they, uh, they enticed the wife to give them an answer of, what, uh, of the riddle on the seventh day. But the next two verses say that she was crying all seven days and complaining at him all seven days. This little riddle caused division in his family. What's wrong with a riddle, preacher? 
What's wrong with the riddle? It was rooted in sin. That's what's wrong with it. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Stop playing with it, brethren. Stop playing with it. You know what? It may not get you today. It may not get you tomorrow. But what you do in moderation, your children will do in excess. It's going to be coming for you, brethren. It's going to be coming for you. Well, what happens, right? What happens, right? Samson takes the, the honey out of the mouth of the lion, and then he, he learns a little bit of something. I'm going to pass that knowledge on. It's going to be all right. Be careful what you learn. Be careful what your little mind spins up when you're reading the Bible. When you learn something new, put it on a shelf. Wait. Wait till the Lord confirms it. Right? Be careful before you use Romans 16, 17 to just slice someone's head off. All right? Let's go there. Romans 16, 17. You guys are looking at me like you never heard the verse. Come on. <laughs> Romans chapter 16, verse 17. I don't even got a clock, guys. I don't know how long I've been up here. So I'm going to just keep preaching, brother. Amen? Oh, you got 30 minutes. Four minutes? Man, I thought you were going to give me amen. You gave me the time? Come on, man. Man, dude. Oh, man. Tough crowd. Tough crowd, man. Oh, man. Uh, the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, Romans 16, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrines which ye have learned and avoid them. You see how that verse can be, right? The devil could put that right in his mouth. Come get this. Come get this. You ain't read all month, but play some Bible roulette, you know? Just play some Bible roulette. And open to that page, read that verse. Ooh, come to church, cause some division. Amen? Right? Oh, what a fellowship. Oh, what a joy divine. Right? Leaning on the... Come on, brethren. Come on. Samson chose to let anger blind him from seeing his wife. My third point is, you don't fight a lion by blinking in its face. You got to be vigilant. Romans 14, or Judges 14. Judges 14. Praise the Lord for the book of Romans, eh? Praise the Lord for the book of Romans. Praise the Lord for Paul. Praise the Lord for the saving blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for the Bible. Amen. Judges 14, 20. Judges 14. Wait, why am I going straight to 20? Oh, yeah, because that's why. But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. Chapter 15. But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of, of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid, and he said, I will go in to my wife into the chamber, but his, her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hadst utterly hated her, therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. You know what? That, that blindness caused by his anger, he lost his wife because of that. He lost a loved one. Right? You won't lose salvation, but you could lose your fellowship. You could not see him. Remember Absalom? After he sinned against David, David cried. David's a man after God's own heart. He said, let him come back to the kingdom. I think it was Absalom. I might, say the wrong, I might be saying the wrong son. Follow me, Bible believers. It's all right. I'm going somewhere. So he, he says, Joab, hey, br bring the son home. Let him come back home. But just don't let him see my face. Well, I don't remember which son it was. It was one of those sons. He said he could come back home, but he can't see my face. And likewise, that's going to be you, brethren. That's going to be you when you're out of fellowship with the Lord. If you're in fellowship with the Lord, praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm not aiming at you right here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Good preaching, brother. Amen. I appreciate it, brethren. All right. Praise the Lord. But if you are backslidden, that's you and you know it. He's hiding his face from you. When you get down in prayer, it seems a whole lot less real than it did some other time, right? Yes. Seems a whole lot less real. Be careful, brethren. You're blinking. You're closing your eyes. You're missing something. Notice that even Samson knew he had sinned and he had broken a vow with God. But Samson was more quick to repair things with his backstabbing wife before he ever brought any kid to, to, to God. 
to make up, right? You saw what it says there, right? He brought a kid. He didn't just go adopt a kid and say, hey, show up, baby. This, this kid's going to make everything better. Yeah, right? You guys have all heard that, right? Let's just have a kid. Let's just have a kid. It's going to make the whole relationship better, right? Oh, man, how many times you heard that one? Yeah, sister's saying, chain, next point, next point. All right. No, you know, no, that's real. It happens. It happens. And, and it happens in your life. You're more willing to fix things with your sin, with your sinful friends, with, with your desires. You're more willing to fix yourself with those things when you know God got a bone to pick with you. What are you making peace with? Christians? What are you making peace with? If it's not God, it's probably wrong. It's probably wrong. Unless God led you there. But I bet you God didn't lead you to what you're making peace with right now. Where you're leading that little goat. Bah, bah, turn back. <laughs> turn back. Idiot. Idiot. You know what, brethren? Once, once the words of a jackass stopped the man from dying. Maybe that's what this is today. Words of a jackass. I'm trying to help you. You don't fight a lion that way. Samson knew how to make peace. He wasn't going to make peace with God. When a lion's hunting you, you can't close your eyes. You have to be watchful. You're bought with the price. You're bought with the price. A valuable piece of meat. The devil will get a good meal. He'll get a real good meal. But you know what? Your job is to alert others. You got a job. You got a job. You know what? It's not just, hey, sit back and enjoy the... No, 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 you got a job. You got a job. What's your job? Alert others. Lion! Lion! There's a lion coming! Everybody, there's a lion coming! You got a job. Your job's to look out for him. Oh, man, that solves the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see, let's see how the Lord could give it. Samson had a... We'll, we'll come back to that. Put, that. put that on that shelf we were talking about a few minutes ago. Put that on that shelf. Samson had a good reason to be upset with his wife. I'm sure some of you have a good reason to be upset with somebody. Yeah? Maybe. I want you to think about this scenario. Think about it. Yeah? You're camping. Everything's good. Looks well, all right. It's okay. Danielle forgot the marshmallows. No s'mores tonight. All right. Ralph's the city slicker. Bad fire. No light. You know? No life. Max, forgot all the food. Hey, don't laugh. What little bit of food he brought, Brother Ivan ate it on the way over. <laughs> so there ain't, there ain't much going on. There ain't much going on. And we're sitting around that little fire. We're all a little upset. We're all a little mad. There's a little bit of an argument. The ladies are fighting. They're sitting on the opposite side of the fire. <laughs> Everybody, oh, oh, where's Danielle? Oh, where's Pastor? Where's Sister Ming Jong? <laughs> no, you're going to want to know everybody's whereabouts. You're going to want to know what's happening. Where's my brother? Where's my sister? You're going to forget all about that whole little fight. You're going to start looking. What's going on? Where's everybody at? Where's everybody at? How can we help them? How can we take care of them? You'll take it that seriously when it's a physical thing, right? You're scared of the one that could kill the flesh, but you're not scared of the one that could, you know, destroy the flesh and then tell the other one, hey, send him to hell. He can't go to hell, right? But he'll get up in there. He'll, get up. he'll make you feel like you're going to hell. He'll do a good job. He's an imitator. He imitates the most perfect being in the world. I'm pretty sure he could imitate anything else, guys. Come on. He imitates the Lord Jesus Christ. If he wants to imitate some fake guilt, some, some fake joy, some whatever, he'll imitate it. He'll do it, he'll do it pretty good too. Pretty good. You know what? You know, we're Bible believers, King James only, dispensational, heaven sweet, hell's hot. But you know what? If you don't live like a believer of the Bible, those are just titles. And you know what? Those titles will lead you a whole lot closer to the devil. To whom much is given, much is required. You got all these titles, it's just going to lead you right next to a, 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 a bit of comfort, some laziness. 
to some joking, playing around. Oh, it's all right. My Christian life's good, man. I'm tell a few jokes, come to church, laugh a little bit, man. Call the pastor, you know, you know, play with him, treat him like one of the boys, you know. It's good. It's good. Nah, it ain't good. I ain't gone with it. See, church is dangerous. I'm, I'm gonna slip back. You guys are joking. No, I'm this is being serious. I'm being serious right now, brethren. I'm being serious. This is a, this is a serious game we play here. When we get to that new church, we're on French Street, guys. We're pe people could. What's this? Oh, I'm gonna walk in there. You know, old Tom's, and you know, like we're in Berkeley, guys. Come on, people are gonna be walking in. This is gonna be very serious. How we hold ourselves in church, how we treat people, how we love people, how we spend our time with people, how willing we are to help the people next to us. It's going to become a whole lot more serious. The, the Lord put us in, what is that, what is that, uh, uh, you know, where you play sports, but you're not in the major leagues yet? Minor leagues? Minor leagues. The minor leagues? Not in the intramurials. Yeah, he put you in the intramurials, and you're hitting it, you're right. But, but now we're going to step up to the big leagues, guys. We're going to step up to the big leagues. Bless God. Bless God. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay, amen. We're still, they're still awake. I like it. It's going to get serious. And you need, you need to be in some serious prayer then. You need to be in some serious prayer for the people around you, for the building we're going to be in, for the pastor, for the pastor's wife, for the brothers and sisters next to you. That's why you got to keep these eyes open. you got to keep them watching and seeing what's going on. If you're always just in your own little bubble, how do you know if the person next to you is hurting? Come on, guys. It's that simple. It's that simple. Lions roaring. Lions roaring. <sighs> yeah, hi, hi, brother. How you doing, sister? Praying for you, sis. What's that? Probably your phone. If you're not doing that physically, probably your thoughts. What you can do when you get home. All right. People always say, what does the Bible mean? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. It means use your head for something more than a hat rack. Yeah, that's, right. that's what it means. Yeah. Get your head into it. It's serious. Mm -hmm. Ju uh, Isaiah 21. Isaiah 21. I'm almost done. Thank you so much for your patience. I'm sorry, Pastor. <laughs> oh, man. This is not 20 minutes. Isaiah 21. Isaiah 21. This was actually originally my, my, um, my text here, but uh, then the Lord moved it elsewhere. So, 21. We're going to start here at verse 6. The Bible says, For thus hath the Lord said unto me, He's talking to you. He's talking to you. Go set a watchman. Let him declare what he seeth. He saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, a, a chariot of a chariot of asses and a chariot of camels, and he hearkened diligently with much heed. He, he watched what was coming in with much heed. Oh, they're just chariots. It's three chariots. Three chariots. No, no, no. He's watching diligently. He's telling you what kind of animal animals are pulling the chariot. He's telling you a little bit of everything. He's diligently watching what happens next because he's diligent. Watching. And he cried, A lion! My Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I am set in my word whole nights. Whole nights. Bump down here to verse 11. Brethren, you need to be crying. There's a lion. You need to be crying. There's a, there's a lion. And you know what? The best way to beat a lion is to have a lion on your own side. Look here at verse 11. The burden of Duma. He said, I don't know if it's Duma. If you're from uh, whatever language that's a bad word in, I apologize. All right, I apologize. I was very confused. Dama? I don't know how it is. Do, is it Duma? Okay, yeah, I didn't want to say that because it's like, a, uh, I, whatever. In Duma, he calleth to me out of Sierra, watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? Two times. The watchman said, the morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye, return, come. Call the Lord home. How many times do you pray, even so, come Lord Jesus? Do you pray for the rapture? If you're really not afraid of what's going on here, of the devil coming after you, you know, even if you don't want to pray that much, come on, if you're going to be fleshy about it, if you're tired of this Christian walk, you're tired of everybody at, at work and in the world constantly pestering you, if you're tired of all this stuff going around, 
Why don't you pray for the return of the Lord more? If you're tired of being on the watchtower where it's lonely, why don't you pray for the morning to come and get relieved of your shift? Samson had the physical strength, but he lacked the spiritual strength. God said to you, His grace is sufficient for thee, for His strength is made perfect in your weakness. You have the opportunity to get victory where Samson failed, where he fell, where the strongest man in the Bible, huge, big old guy, or I think he was a little guy, but he was strong, man. He was like me. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and he was, like, he was a little guy, but still failed. Failed all the time. Failed all the time. Ripped the lion as if it was a goat. And you got more power in you right now, Christian. A whole lot more power. A whole lot more power. The Bible promises that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So stop hiding your face from God. Get Him to cleanse your sins. And then say, hey, I need a lion. I need some backup, Lord. I need some backup. I've been failing. You know I've been failing. I need some backup, Lord. You know, just so I just so I can get my armor back right again, Lord. And, and just, you know, I pray, Lord, you could have some Christians help me hold that shield up, Lord. But until, until my armor is back up, Lord, I, I, need, I need to get close to you. I need another lion. I need, I need to be close to you, Lord. I need you to come back. I need you to be real to me. I need you, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But alas, we're in Laodicea. It's falling on deaf ears. Dead eyes, sleeping minds. I hope it's not. I hope it's not. If you be sober and vigilant, you'll be all right. Your loved ones will be all right. But if you won't, if you won't, Judges 15. If you won't be faithful to God, if you don't watch and pray, if you don't take that prayer list right there seriously and the praise list, and the unspokens. You don't take that stuff seriously? What's going to happen to your loved ones? Judges 15. Judges 15, verse 4. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes and took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between the two tails. And when he had sent the, set the branches on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burnt up both the, the shocks and also the standing corn with the vineyards and olives. Then the Philistines said, Who had done this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timonite, because he had taken his wife and because her, uh, because... And given her to his companion. And the Philistine came up and burnt her and her father with fire. That's your fruits. Your loved ones burning in hell. Woo! No. No. I know that. But. I mean, I'm sure that's probably where the terror of the Lord comes in. Getting up there and knowing, man, I had an opportunity to witness to my dad that day. And that was the day my dad was going to my, my open his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and he was going to accept the Lord. He was going to sell out holy that day. But you know what? I woke up with a bad stomach ache. Bad stomach ache. Real reason. Real reason. Real bad stomach ache. Whole lot of stuff going on. You know what? Man. And you know what, man? I've been having a hard time. You know what? I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to just going to have a bad day. You know, dad, I can't go. I'm feeling bad. I'm just going to sit here and just wallow in my sadness. You don't say that, but you're saying that. Next day the Lord comes back and gets you, raptures you up to home. You're up there in heaven rejoicing. And he says, "Hey, look, could have. Could have had your mom saved. Could have had your dad saved. Could have your sister saved. Your brother-in-law. Stepsister. Whoever. Best friend. Neighbors. That old jolly guy at the gas station. This is them. They're going to be in fire one day. Got some rewards here. But look at them. How will you live your life now, knowing that you're being hunted? 
and your loved ones are being hunted as I speak. That's all I got for you guys.